Hello all, welcome to Lee Technologies. In this session, we'll discuss about Oracle Lee Business Suite, different project types. Let me get into the outline. Following is outline for this particular session. We'll try to understand what is a project, what are the different methodologies we'll generally come across, and different types of e-business suite project, and which project types are good to work for a developer and the developer tools. What is a project? According to the Project Management Institute PMI standard, a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to provide a service or a product in a different time period. So every project will always have a different time period. Okay. And what are the different methodologies you generally come across? So when, I, when you work on a project, you know, like uh, your, your project, your PMO or maybe your organization, what they do is they'll try to understand which methodology they have to follow to achieve the relevant target. The reason is, you know, like when you undertake a project, you should have a set, set of policies or standard to follow. Now, let us, if you're working infrastructure project, you may have a different different way of execution. If you're working IT project, especially maybe ERP application or mobile application development, you may have a different way of execution, right? So each particular methodology will have a different set of, uh, what you say, tools, uh, policies, standards, open standards, and different set of, you know, like a tie up with the different, you know, like a standard organizations, right? So that's how, based on the project type, a methodology, methodology will be chosen. So coming to our e-business suit, which type of methodology you generally come across. So generally we either follow waterfall or maybe a hybrid agile. These are the two major standards which are followed in Oracle e-business suite projects. So each particular project methodology will have its own set of advantages and disadvantages. And you know, it depends upon the project, your organization, which one to follow. But as a developer, we just need to have a clarity on which methodology you are in a particular project type. If you are not aware, try to get a, some insight into this one, like understand, you know, what is a waterfall model as well as what is hybrid agile model. model. Okay. So in generally waterfall model, the thing is you have a different set of requirements and you will follow from requirements gathering to the development, production, implementation to, you know, support phase kind of thing. But in hybrid agile, what happens is you may not have a clarity on your requirements. You'll go in a sprint phase. And in each sprint, again, you will try to validate your requirements and your customer to validate then and there. And again, you know, like you will be, you know, modifying your code and designing it again. So you'll not have a very good set of information on your requirements while working on a project. Like your requirements will get refined based on, you know, like uh, your, based on the feedback which you get from your customer, right? So that's generally a hybrid agile model. The different types of Oracle e-business suit projects so you know like uh, every project type will have its own set of advantages and disadvantages but let us have a clarity on what type of project you generally come across an e-business suite one is implementation so implementation nothing but your client is not using e-business suite so far and they are implementing nothing but they are you know like uh, implementing your particular e-business suite from the scratch they are building their particular set of configurations from the scratch and building their custom reports or configuring the standard reports or maybe you know like a designing the interfaces or designing the workflows, all those things from the scratch. That's called implementation stuff. Coming to support project, nothing but your client is already go, already live on the particular e-business suite version and you're providing a support to that. So support means nothing but let us say in a, in a general go live environment, what happens is, so one thing, one basic thing you have to keep in mind is any software is not a bug free, right? So always, there is a good amount of chance that your particular product may have a bug, right? So it can be due to data issue. It can be due to, you know, like, uh, what you say, not, maybe due to pro improper testing, right? It can be your uh, version incompatibility of software. It can be your hardware incompatibility, or it can be, you know, like a hardware issue, or it can be software issue. A lot number of issues may arise in general production environment, right? So that's the reason you're always, that's the reason the client always require a a production support team to support their particular go live stuff right to support their erp application during sub in the support phase right so generally it involves bug fixes and enhancement coming to the upgrade so upgrade is generally you know like it's mostly a technical upgrade it could be your you know like a, it can be a recommendation from oracle it can be recommendations by the maybe it could be a legal jurisdiction or maybe let us say 
or it can be you know like uh, outdate of your hardware outdate stuff right so there are a lot number of reasons why clients go from uh, client you know upgrades their particular ebay's version from one particular version to the another version so maybe you can under, if you are not clear on this one it's very simple you know like similar to you know let us say you're already on windows 7 and you're upgrading from windows 7 to windows 10 right the reason could be a number of things it can be security issue it can be a microsoft issue it can be you know like your hardware issue or it can be you know like uh, you want good 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 amount of performance kind of issue right so that's the reason you go for upgrade coming to rollout so rollout is very simple now assume that your client is already live in a particular country and you know like uh, they are they are good with the things like uh, they uh, based on the performance their requirements everything is met and what they want to do is in some set of very big projects what they do is they will not they will not implement this particular software across the globe they'll just go country by country or maybe product by product kind of thing so like let us say your country is already live on a particular erp version on a, on a particular country and they they want to you know like uh, they want to use the same particular instance in another country that's kind of a rollout assume that your client has a presence now if you consider amazon amazon already amazon was there in your say now it came to india right so what they do like they'll just try to configure some set of things which they have to do for india that's it right that's a rollout or other thing other the other thing also you can call it as now let us say assume that like your client has a presence in a particular city and assume that like you know they they got a particular company or they they, they built up a, a particular uh, particular manufacturing unit in a particular particular city and they want to you know con they have to configure right they have to roll out this particular this particular thing to that particular what you say like the new city in which they have implement they which they have constructed right so that's kind of a roll out so which project types are good for a developer right so every project type it's have its own advantages and disadvantages so one suggestion is that you know like uh, don't be in any project if there is no learning curve now let us say you're in a project for around maybe 5 years or maybe 2 years or 1 year kind of thing but make sure that you have a learning curve in that so the best thing is you know like uh, try to get out of the project after 2 years if at all if you don't find a position to for growth or a learning curve so each particular project type will have its own advantages that's the reason always don't just go with a project type but understand what is your role and what is your what is a you know a learning curve you have in that right and you know like in some projects where if even if it is a support or upgrade kind of thing you may have a good learning curve depends upon the project requirements depending upon your position depending upon the integration of your particular business suit with other third party systems okay so implementation project will have a you know very for a developer it will have a clear understanding where you will be building everything from scratch and coming to support project it will enhances your analytical skills for the bug fixes you will understand how exactly a particular thing work, thing works it also uh, now let us say is someone who is going from support to the implementation project like they always you know like they may have a good debugging skills compared to comparing to the developer who worked in implementation so that is the learning curve and upgrade upgrade project generally will have very very less amount of coding it just requires to you know replace a table name replace a column name or maybe just uh, have a new table in that so a very 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 much less involvement for a developer in the upgrade projects and rollout again it's very less because it's just kind of a configuration thing which required and it's mostly a functional guys uh, work and of course very partial amount of developer role will be there in this particular project and developer tools when you are working a e business suite project always make sure that you have appropriate tools to work on right so code maintenance tools most of the clients doesn't have this but they doesn't maintain this but this is very much very much important for a developer or maybe for an organization to consider because if the code is lost let us say you are working on a particular version and you know like someone has modified and that is not working and you want to get revert to the old code right until unless you maintain somewhere you know cannot get it back right so that's a, that's the reason the best thing is to always have a code maintenance tool and the thing is is code migration tool so in some set of environments the client the client chooses a proprietary software the migration in some set of clients they what they do is they'll develop their in-house migration tool so it depends upon the client coming to the id is like uh, make sure that you have a appropriate set of editors for you to work on it can be implementation support upgrade and it can be any project but make sure that you have an appropriate set of ids and log files for you know like java may have a different uh, log file in a particular location reports may have a different log file in different location so always you know like try to understand you know for a particular particular component where a log file is so so that you know based on that you can get more insight when you are getting a bugs right and 
have a handy queries the reason is you know like when you are putting when you are working on a particular project you now assume that you worked in a scm for some time and later you got moved to hrms right so the problem is now let us say you got back to scm again so you may forget the queries right so it's not that you will forget but if it is good if you have them in handy right so it allows it increases the productivity it it increases you know like um, it allow you know it will have it provides a flexible amount of time to work to learn something new right so always you know like uh, working on same thing is of no use right until unless you have a good advantage always learning and uh, learning new things always have a good advantage compared to comparing to do the doing the same thing right monotonously so always have a handy queries right and these are some these are some of the insights of the different project types and the developer tools required and uh, yeah this end of the session please do subscribe to my channel please do provide your valuable comments i'll try to improve in every each and every session and thanks for time good luck